Good morning. Hi, everyone. I'm going to um, just look down to find myself. Oh, somebody said they saw me. <laughs> I'm going to find myself here and pin it to the top. That way, turn this down. There I am. That way, in case you can't find me, I usually try to pin the most current live to the top. Let's see. Ooh, I don't like listening to myself talk. So good morning, everybody who's here. I see two people are here. don't know who they are. With my magic mirror, I'm going to say Donna. Mm, Karen. Haven't seen any comments yet. <laughs> so I am so tired today. Rainbow Stamper still not feeling well. <laughs> so uh, it's making for very long sleeping nights. All right. So today what we're going to do is we're going to make a Patricia. Hey, Patricia. I mean, how come I'm not seeing comments on this one? There they are. We're going to make this card, but we're going to make an updated version. So you see that. So if you are a current customer of mine, I just mailed out my Christmas cards yesterday. So hopefully you'll get them sometime in the next week or so. Um, and I did pull one of these out. So I mailed out actually one that was Mrs. Claus. Thanks for sharing. And I thought it was so cute. So I was like, I'm going to send some of these cards out that I've made. So I mailed those out. Um, again, if you're a customer that's purchased anything in the past year, I mailed them out. So I think I mailed about 24 of them. And then I mailed out my team cards as well. Hi, Marty. Nice to see you today. Thanks for stopping in. So I figured what we're going to do is we're going to make one of these cards and we're going to do one in a Christmas theme. And then the other one we can do in any kind of theme. So we can kind of make this part the sentiment or something. But this is a great uh, stamp set to use. Even if you might still have it from last year. And it's really, it's fun to color in. I did this one with uh, Stampin' Blend. So super fun to color in. Hi Donna, thanks for joining. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys. Rainbow Stampers Christmas picture with Santa. I got that out so I could share it with you guys. I thought you would like that today. So, and then a couple other things. I'll share a few of the other cards I made. Um, we made these in card class on Friday, which was super fun. Everybody had fun, even though it was only a really small class, which sometimes happens during the holidays. So anyway, I'm going to um, pop you down. So if you don't want to look, just avert your eyes for a minute, and I will tell you when we're in position. All right, so you're all good. Let me slide these over so I can see. Okay, so Rainbow Stamper, here he is with Santi. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? I'm going to slide this over just a little bit because the volume's in the way. I want to make sure it's you all can see. There you go. So he did tell Santa he drew him a list with what he wanted with pictures and then he was describing it to him. So <laughs> super adorable and then so we made this card which was really fun and I'm gonna tell you when I got this paper the mosaic paper uh, last November I did not like it at all but this card it's really pretty the um, mosaic paper actually has a, a a shine finish to it so it almost looks embossed and it's got some texture so this paper is actually very pretty I think I just don't like certain patterns of it but overall I think there's several sheets that I've actually grown on me and what I did with this one was I combined it with the um, magnolia, um, the small magnolia, and I cut it out with the dye. And then the sorry for everything is what I used for this because I figured maybe you could use a sympathy card. Unfortunately, I went to a viewing last night as well. So kind of a good card, I guess, to have on hand. This is another very simple one that I made using the Everyday Label Punch, and I just did it two times. So I punched once, and then the crumb cake layer underneath, I actually just snipped in half and layered it. This one uses the new stamp set, and this is a fun gatefold card. This was uh, my friend Rhonda wanted to make one. I actually ended up changing this in the end. I did this background in Night of Navy. I thought it kind of made it pop a little bit more, so that was nice. And then last one was one with the Country Road stamp set. And this is actually in Versamark, or sorry, not in Versamark, in Craft White Ink on Navy. So I think this one turned out really nice as well. Great card for a, uh, you have a guy or a male friend or your dad or your brother, your uncle, your nephew. Great card to be able to send to a guy. So 
those are a couple things. Do stay tuned. I thank you all very much for voting for me. So I will be taking part in Kylie Bertucci's uh, winner's blog. So I'll keep you posted on that. And I kind of think that's really all that I have. I don't have a whole lot to share. I'm probably, I'm not going to be live next Wednesday since it's Christmas. Um, I will try to maybe go live Monday or Tuesday, but we're going to have to see how it goes. So I'm not going to commit myself to anything. I probably can squeeze in maybe a live on New Year's Eve, but we'll have to kind of see how it goes. So I'll just be there as I'm able. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this card. This is a regular... Um, regular size card and then we're just going to add this little flap to it so it kind of just makes it a little bit of fun it kind of brings out instead of just having the regular paper there the santa kind of makes it a little bit more fun without it having to be permanent so i thought this was a really cute card to recreate so we're going to do one of these we're going to do one as a christmas card and i'm just trying to figure out which paper i have the most of because i only have really uh three left to choose from since we've sold out of so much paper this year we want to have one more and i also have this whole uh bundle here so maybe we can do it with one of these these are pretty fun as well because I have more selection here so I think I'm going to use this this is actually a medley and then we could even use one of these little pieces too so that would be kind of fun so this is actually a product medley that believe it or not is going to return uh next holiday season so if you haven't gotten this yet this also comes with a coordinating die and stamp set and I think the reason I want to use this is because I'm going to use this die if I can get this out here to kind of duplicate this part so i'll use that and then we'll just kind of decorate the inside so i'm going to do this for the christmas version we put these pictures away so i don't ruin them because if i get ink on them i'll be very sad and most likely in trouble <laughs> okay so we're going to do that but i'm going to let you guys in the meantime i have a couple um suggestions and you guys can think about this and then i will look it over but i wanted to make the second card using one of the new designer series papers now i may not have all the stamp sets that do coordinate with this however i do have plenty of paper and we can always make it a very um just a sentiment here or a flower or something so we have this one this is actually the one you can earn free for celebration which starts january 3rd so this is the lily paper, which is really pretty. We also have um, the gold, the plaid, which we could do a mail card would be a good one. We have plaid. We have argyle. We have the uh, best dress suite, which has the, the heels and the purses, which is cute. You have a friend who loves to shop. We have the tropical oasis, which has a lot of great patterns in it. These are only some of the patterns. This is the sampler pack, which you will get if you uh, sign up as a demonstrator starting January 3rd. You'll also get the mini uh, guillotine trimmer. This one, I cannot remember what this is. Painted something. I'm going to have to look that one up. And then we also have the poppies, which is, I think it'd be a huge seller. So if that's something you want to get, I think you should get that early. And beautiful poppies. So we can use any of these. So you guys, if you want to think about what type of card you want to make... For the second version, which is going to be a non-Christmas card, um, let me know. In the meantime, what we're going to do is, so I'm going to pick out um, two pieces. So I think what I'll use is I'm going to use one of these little pieces for the inside. And then I'm going to pick out something for the front. What if we do the packages? Because that'll be really cute against that. So we're going to use this and this. Let me see, make sure I don't want to use one of these other ones instead. I'll use one of these because that looks pretty fun. So we'll use those two. Um, nice part about this is too, it does come with stickers. So if you wanted to kind of skip out on some of the decorating, you could always easily add your sentiment with this. You could add some stars. We have these really pretty, um, they're kind of like a, a holly leaf. I actually made a really nice card with those as well. Christmas tree. So I might use some of these just to cut down on the time. And then we'll make our second card. A little bit more elaborate so this one uh, also coordinates with real red or old olive so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make the base real red and then I'll do the background piece old olive so our base will be real red for this part and then old olive for this part okay so let me grab that and the only thing you have to make sure is so I have I do have some bases pre-cut and you probably could have it so it opened long ways, but I'm going to make this so it's a um, it's a four and a quarter by 11 this way. And then we'll use the other piece for the flap. So let me see if I have a little scrap piece here. It needs to be two by three. 
So let's see. That could work. Let's see if that's three. Yep, that's good. So this one will be good. And then we just need a piece of old olive for the other layer. And you could certainly switch this out. You could even put in some uh, gold foil paper if you wanted to would be pretty. And you can make the two pieces here. You could make this so it's actually a little bit bigger if you want. But I'm going to cut it small just like it is. That way too you can also um, save a little bit on paper. So let me just move this over and we will get these all cut and scored. So for this, we want to score this at five and a half. Oops. And then we'll cut it. That way you would have two bases if you wanted to make two cards at once. And we're gonna cut it at four and a quarter. So that's gonna be our base. Okay, so there's one. You can always make a second one. And I'm going to trim this. Let me see what this is actually cut down to. Because I feel like it's probably four by. It's like four and four and three quarters by four. So four by four. Let's see. Four by four and three quarters. So that's going to layer onto here. So it's just a little bit smaller, kind of has a little bit wider of a band. And then this piece we will do at three and three quarters by four and a half. Let's see. So that will lay right on there. Okay. And then I had, where is it? That little scrap piece. So this one is going to measure... We said two, let me just, that oh, looks pretty good, by three, and I'm actually going to just, let's see how this looks, because this really just needs to kind of fit underneath of your piece here, so it really can be way shorter than this, so I'm going to trim this back the way I had, so I said it was three, so this is just going to be enough basically to kind of hold this flap underneath. So you are going to need to have a full sheet underneath. So that's where this piece is going to come into play. So this, so again, this one measured two by three, and then you score it at a half inch. And then this one we will just do five. Was that five? Yeah, maybe I did that one too. We'll do three and three quarters. Let me see. I probably just goofed that up, but... This should be okay, I think. Probably should have brought that a little bit more to the edge. This one, you don't really want to trim as much. I shouldn't have trimmed that as far as I did. So I'm going to have to see if I can get this. Because basically what this is doing is the little flap is going to hold this down. This will close. This will close. So let's see. So when we put this down, we're going to just need to make sure. So don't trim yours down. You want yours to be... Four by five and a quarter. I trimmed mine too small. I shouldn't have left it, but since I already cut it, I'm going to let it go. I will make sure that I do put all the measurements onto my blog post. So if you're following along, that will all be there. Other thing we're going to do is we're going to do, how about if we do something with the, um, the Christmas trees? So we will stamp a couple Christmas trees just to kind of keep it simple. And then we'll just put a, we'll put a little sentiment here so we can do a couple Christmas trees and cut them out. Okay. So we will do that with a piece of Whisper White. Let's see what I have here. And I'm going to just stick with the same color. So real red, old olive. So I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of the trees. And when you're doing this, what you can kind of do is you can just at this point make a distinction. What size oval do you think you want to use? So I got out and you could use anything. You could use the circles, you could use the ovals, anything you want. I'm going to do the stitched oval and I'm going to do this one. And then um, I'm going to do a regular oval for the base part. So I'm going to actually just go up one size in my ovals. And actually I'll do scalloped. So let's see if that's going to be 
that'll be good enough right there. So that is the second largest scalloped oval. So what I'm going to do just to kind of try to keep these in frame is I'm going to just take a pencil and very lightly because it is going to cut the outside, just trace around so I know exactly where to stamp. Kind of so I have an eyeball. And I'm just going to put in some trees. And they don't all necessarily have to fit onto the oval. Because then what we'll also do is we'll stamp one of the trees and kind of pop it up. Let me stamp this off. Maybe we can cut that one out. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then I have two, whoops, so I'm gonna cut out my stitched oval and then I have two trees here that I can cut out. We'll pop those up. And we're not gonna make this too like over the top because it does have a lot of shine with the paper. So we're gonna kind of keep it a little bit mellow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out my stitched oval and Lordy mercy, I already lost my tree. As soon as I locate my tree, we're gonna cut out two of those trees and then we will put this together. I do have my, um, I'm gonna keep these out just in case. Good gracious. And I'm gonna cut this out and I'm gonna do a gold foil circle since this has some gold foil embellishment. So I'm just gonna cut out a gold foil. Here's my other one, gold foil. And I'm just gonna grab a scrap of that. So I'm gonna try to put as many of these together <laughs> as I can onto my uh, cutting board. So let's see. So I'm kind of trying to just slightly line this up with where I had it. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll line up my tree and then I'm just gonna put this on the end and cut out a scalloped circle or scalloped oval. Put this all together, run it through the big shot. Oh my gosh, and look, that whole one moved. Good thing I stamped two. So this one did move a little bit, but it was kind of okay because we stamped all over the place. This one, however, did not really stamp very well. So I'm gonna run this through one more time and actually I'm gonna tape this down now, which I should have done the first time since I was doing 15 different die cuts at the same time. Put this here. I did get my scalloped oval. Let me just pop this through one more time. And I wanted to tell you guys, I did um I did buy that other embossing plate to be able to um share with you guys how it works, but I haven't fooled with it enough to actually know all the different things you can do with it. So I want to show you, I'll show you what I mean. All right, so we'll use that one. Maybe we can restamp that somehow. We'll figure something out. I have it handy. I must have put it away for a change. Yep, okay. I'm not going to fool with it now. If I find it, I'll let you guys know. But I got the, um, basically it's the other embossing plate that Stampin' Up! is selling. That's supposed to kind of help with the transfer in between the dies and the folders and whatnot. All right, so that's not too terrible, actually, believe it or not. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to do the sentiment in real red, and then I want to cut it out with that little decorative piece. So let's just go with Oh Christmas Tree because that's pretty nondescript, and you could use it with a lot of different things for people. So one more. And put that just like that. I am going to put a piece of tape oops, down just so I know that this is actually centered correctly. Really should at this point get out some strips of my purple tape and leave it hanging around, but I keep forgetting. I guess this is what happens, right, when you're running into the uh, the last moments before the holiday come and somebody's sick.
Nobody wants to sleep in their own bed. <laughs> I'm sure all of you that have children that are growing up are thinking, enjoy it. And I, I understand because I think the same thing and I try to make myself do that. But boy, it is not easy sometimes, is it? All right, so just to kind of bring this in a little bit, I'm going to take Mossy Meadow and my probably very dirty sponge, <laughs> and I'm just going to sponge the edges just to get rid of a little bit of this white. Make it just a little bit, kind of not as stark for the contrast. You could also do this with a, um, a stamp and write marker, kind of trace the edge of it, but just to give it a little bit of something else. And then what we'll do is we will put... Um, on one of these we'll put a little star because this has some nice little stars as well so I'm going to put this on here this I like to put on with liquid glue because I really have a hard time getting certain things to stick to the foil I don't know if that's just me you could also uh, pop it up on a dimensional if you wanted to so I'm gonna just put this on here just like so and this one I'm gonna put up on a dimensional might only end up using one. Maybe I could put the other one on the inside. And one little tiny one up at the top. Just like so. Is that speaking of Christmas, is anyone out there really like fully officially ready and they're they're good to go and they're not concerned with anything? Are there any of those people alive out there? I'm not, I am definitely not one of them, so just wondering, because I'm still trying to figure out what to get my nieces. My one niece absolutely loves baby dolls. Babies, 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 everything. Actually, one year she asked for a real baby for Christmas, because she said she's sure somebody would want to get rid of one. Even if it cried a lot, she would be willing to take the baby off of their hands. <laughs> so I'm just adhering these two pieces together. So she has enough babies that she probably could open her own store. So I did get her some uh, some boy baby clothes because she said she never has enough boy baby clothes. So she's getting some boy baby clothes, but I have to figure out something else to get her. Unfortunately, I don't know if this is near any of you, but the Sears that is by us is closing, which is pretty sad. And uh, I mean, that's been it. It, it's at uh, the Hartford Mall, which is near me. It's been there for uh, probably longer than the mall was there. So kind of sad that that's going to be going away. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to just, since I had some ink on this already, I'm just going to sponge the edge a little bit. And I know this was a little bit darker because it was Mossy Meadow, but kind of just to make it pop. And then if you wanted to, there's also a couple other little uh, die cuts in here. So you have these little gold stars. So you could even cut out a couple of these and decorate kind of how I did with the snowflakes on this one. This also I did emboss. So that was kind of fun. So that's another element you could add to it if you wanted to. So what I'm going to do right now before I put down my center is I'm going to just make sure this is all layered correctly. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to put down a panel and I know this has a lot of stuff on it so I am going to cut out a little something. So excuse me once again you do want to make sure that yours is four and a quarter I'm sorry four by five and a quarter because you want it to be almost a full sheet so it holds this flap down. So this one's a little bit small only because my flap is kind of tiny. So when you cut yours make sure you use a full sheet. So I'm just going to kind of improv mine for now. So this is going to go here this piece is going to go here. We can always, I'm not even adhering this yet because I want to see if I need to trim any of it down. But we're going to just kind of fool with if this is going to go in the center like that. So I'm going to kind of keep that there for now. I'm going to move these off. So even though this isn't really necessarily centered this way because we are going to have the sentiment down here. So I kind of laid it out to see where I wanted it. So I'm going to move these two. I'm going to hold this in place, open this up. Now I'm going to put liquid glue on the back of this. And I'm going to try to put this without moving. I'm just going to put my fingers here. A little bit of liquid glue, which again gives you the ability to move it if you need to. So you want to make sure that this little fold part is right at the end, only because mine's short. If your paper was bigger, you're going to be kind of okay. So I'm laying this down, attempting to make sure that it's pretty 
straight and centered and we're just gonna see how that works so that's worked out pretty well so now that I have it where I want it I'm just gonna press with my bone folder just to get that glue to it here make sure that this is nice and firmly pressed down all right and then we're gonna flip this over we're gonna attach this here so I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on just the one half of this and then I'm actually gonna flip this open because I don't want it to stick in case there's glue anywhere else so you also could have conversely put glue on the back of the red piece but I'm gonna go with that and I am gonna pop this one up on dimensionals as well I just had them a second ago Holy moly. Yeah, so anyway, so the Sears is closing. So I was able to get my niece some really nice. I usually buy her um, for her baby dolls. I think it's like zero to three months clothing. So I got her some of that. But I'm trying to find out something else to get her. So she was telling me yesterday that she does really like to color with very detailed pictures mind you she's six also she's six and a half she's not too much older than Christian but <laughs> she was describing to me how she likes to color in these detailed pictures which I thought was pretty funny but so anyway here's this the only thing I am going to add because we do need a little something to be able to write one in the center is I'm going to add a square I think this is probably about three and a half square Wow, man, see, I'm telling you, my math, you have no idea how much my math has improved <laughs> since I've started making cards. I can eyeball something now. I am very proud of myself, too, I must say. I really, my uh, my measurement skills and my, my mathing have just increased incredibly. So I'm just going to decorate this one, put a little bit of something on it, and then we'll add that to the inside. And then we'll make our other card. So hopefully by now you guys have thought of a different card that you would like to make with a different theme. So I'm going to just put, let's see, on this one. How about if we'll add, we have this extra little tree. So we'll add this little tree here. And hope you have a wonderful Christmas. That's a really nice sentiment. So we'll add that. And I'm going to put this in red since we have some green on there already. There's also a couple little stars. Oh, and I wanted to add a star to my tree. So really clean font. I'm going to take, there's a super tiny little star here. And I'm going to put this in some pineapple punch. I'm just going to kind of stamp a few stars all over. There we go. So we'll leave it at that. So just a few stars. And I have one other thing I wanted to add. So let me put this on here. Just a little glue. That way if I need to move it around, I can. So pretty quick and simple for the most part. Probably hardest part is because I cut that one a little bit weird. But it still ended up working out nicely. And if you wanted to, if you're concerned of you covered this up, you could always die cut that part out underneath and use it for something else. So keep that in mind. But again, when you're attaching anything that has foil on it, make sure you use, uh, I don't know, I just find that snail adhesive does not stick to foil for me whatsoever. Maybe it's just me. So there's that. And I have one other little thing I wanted to add. As long as I can find it, I'm pretty sure it's in here. Yeah, left them over here. Oh, dang, I thought they were in here somewhere. Let's see. Maybe they're underneath. Here they are. These little gold stars. These are really cute. So the cool part about this, if you get this product medley, it comes with every single thing that's here. All of those things. The only thing you will need is uh, base paper. So real red or old olive. And I'm just going to add a star up here. These do have adhesive, so I'm kind of sticking it more to the star and not to the underneath so that you can put one on the inside on that little tree too while you're at it. Oops. There you go. So sweet, 
easy, fun. Pretty simple, I'll say, for the most part. So let me just put all this stuff away. I'm gonna make sure I give this a, a nice recrease. Put all this stuff away, and then we will move on to our non-Christmas version. So, give me one second. Just kinda shuffle all this stuff together. One other thing um, I was talking about at club class the other day because someone was asking me how I store my dies. And I actually store my dies in a, a little bin that you all have probably seen that Stampin' Storage makes. However, if you are really limited on space, what you can do, and I'll show you because it works out really easily. Let me move these things and I'll show you exactly what I mean. And you could always keep your cases if you wanted to, if you thought, well, maybe one day if I get rid of that stamp set, I want to have the case to get rid of it in. But what you can do is you can pull out the insert. That way you know exactly what goes with it. You can stick this in here. You can stick your stuff to it. And then they will all, now granted, I know this one is kind of sliding all over the place, but they all fit together. So then you can keep all of your stuff. Now, what I would do if that was the case is I probably would save these in case I decided that I did want to sell it in the future. But if you are limited on space, you could put all of your stuff together. That way you'll always know where your dies are and your stamps are, and you can have everything together. So that's one handy, hopefully little tip. So let me move all of this over. I'm going to keep these out because I'm sure we're going to do something with a circle. Although we could do a circle. We could do an oval. We could do a square. Probably could even do a rectangle. Oh, Karen was out walking the dogs. Holy cow. Oh, you can also buy magnetic sheets. That's absolutely a great idea, Tammy. You could do that. But if you have the ones that have the sticky already on them, and I know sometimes people outline them, you could just like put some, put a little piece of, um, tear and tape on the inside that way you could kind of stick it without having to buy something else as well so that's another good idea okay so let me see yeah art you know Kmart the Kmart that was around here originally got bought out by Sears and we can see that didn't last very long huh <laughs> all right let's see girls are better with small things that is true my other niece the one that's older she loves to um, draw and stamp. And Christian, actually, believe it or not, I don't know where he gets it. He's very creative and artistic. <laughs> oh, Carol, you live in Muskegon. I have relatives that live in Muskegon. Really sad about the Sears, I know. All right, so I'm just scrolling back. So if you happen to have decided on what you think we should make, let me know. We have so many, and I will post all their measurements, Stacy. Yes, I will. I'm just going back and looking at the comments. You cannot get, oh, the golf paper, if that's what you're saying. I see Donna said the golf paper. You can get just the golf paper. I'm hoping with that whole medley thing, I'm hoping next year that they're going to um, sell a refill for the paper because I know some people that bought it twice because there was no paper refill. So that's an awful lot of investment if you ask me, right? Something new. You tore your Kmart down. Isn't that sad? I know. Oh. Oh, rubber band. That's another good idea, too. All right. So, so far, the only person that's chimed in is Donna. And she said she wanted me to make a mint golfing card. I'm going to see how fast she types and tells me that is not what she said. <laughs> but I can certainly do a golf card. We can do that. I think, I don't know if I got the golf set, but I got another set, which actually is the water set. We could use that one. <laughs> Somebody's laughing. So, I'm sure that went over. <laughs> I'm not even going to say what because I probably would get myself in trouble by whatever it is I would say. Let's see. Where, where did I do? I just had that out a second ago. So here's this. Oh, here it is. So um, I could use the golf paper and then we could do something like this one with the making a difference in the oars. Oh, Donna, you know you love mint. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to make an all mint card with shades of mint, and then we're going to accent it with mint. Mint, mint, mint. Totally just kidding. We're going to do the golf paper. And I promise, Donna, I'm not going to use any mint. At least I'm not going to intentionally use any mint. So let's see. We have these couple pieces here. So we have plaid, and then the other side is the tees. And then we have Argyle, and the other side is plaid. So we're going to use those. And how about if we make it on 
What color is this? I feel like it's garden green. Does it say on here? Let me look. Hold on. Let me check my book. Everyone should be getting their um, occasions catalog soon. I haven't gotten mine. So if you're a customer of mine, I did mail them to you, or I should say from Stampin' Up. But I always mail myself one. That way I know when everybody got them. Donna was telling me she just got hers. She got one one day and one, I think, like a day later. So I believe her celebration catalog came second. Hold on, I'm almost here. I'm trying not to show this to anybody. This is the hardest part about having the catalog is that you can't whip it out and show anybody. That sounds worse than I intended. So Garden Green Night of Navy. So we'll use... All right, so what do we want to go for? Do we want to go for plaid? Or argyle? Give me something. Peppermint patties don't have that mint color. That is true, and those are the best. You got yours last week, Marty. Okay, good to know. I know you don't like the color. It's okay. The poppy sweet. I know, right? A mint vomit emoji. <laughs> I will try. Okay, I saw a plaid. I will try to do... I have plaid and argyle, so that's what we'll go with. I might have to use two pieces because I think I'm going to use this. And that. We'll use those two together. So I'm going to do it in uh, garden green. But maybe I could do a New Year's card sometime next week if I can pull it off. And I know you're probably like, well, that's not going to give us enough time. I feel like there might be a blog hop coming up too. I could be wrong, but I have to, I have to look and see. I'm a little bit off. Uh, I feel like I'm like really just not running behind, but just things are just flying all of a sudden. And I'm going to do as a contrast, I'm going to do Navy for this piece here. So it'll be green with Navy and then the paper. So let me just pull a piece of that out and we'll get this cut up and get going. And hopefully I won't botch this one up with the cutting like I did for the last one. And maybe instead of doing the ovals, we can do squares or something instead. So I'm going to, oh, this one I didn't want to do. Hold on. So let me score this first. I'm going to score it at five and a half. Also, the, the um, BGE man came yesterday to fix my washing machine. I don't know if I told you guys the dramatics of my washing machine. But anyway, so that's our base card. He came to fix it. And... We're gonna, I'm going to cut this at three and a quarter, and then I'm going to score it at a half inch just in case I goof up so I have extra by two. So he came to fix the washing machine. It's taken forever. Thank goodness my neighbors have been letting me use their washing machine to wash clothes when they're not home. That was extremely kind of them. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to use this for the inside piece. So I'm going to cut this to four by five and a quarter. So he... Replace one part, replace something else, and then the one part that he had to replace, which is the ball bearings, because I have one of those newer washers, um, he couldn't get it off. So he told me, he said, I'm probably going to have to break it. I forgot what this was already. Let's see. Four and three quarters by four. Okay. So he told me he probably was going to have to break it. Well, when he broke it, it splattered oil all over the wall. So he said, I'm really sorry. I already called and told him they're going to have somebody come out and fix it. So I thought, well, that's not so bad, I guess. So he's like, well, have somebody come out and fix it. I said, okay. So the people already called me. So the washing machine still isn't fixed because now he had to order the other plate. However, it still won't give up. Didn't cut that short enough. I didn't think so. It still won't give up the error code. So I'm hoping when he comes back today to replace that part. And then in the meantime, he broke the tray that was underneath. He broke something else. He's like, so I'm going to have to replace that poor guy. Probably by the time he left here thought, as sometimes I've said to you all, when I think to myself, I just don't even want to do this anymore because I've made such a horrible card. But can you imagine like you're doing your job fixing something and <laughs> you splatter grease all over. He had grease all over his head. So they said that they will fix, um, either try to match up the paint, and if they can't, they'll just repaint the laundry room. 
which I thought, well, that's good because we've never painted the laundry room, so that's kind of fine with me. So I'm just going to fold this piece over. Same with this. I'm going to fold this, get it ready. All right, so now here is the part where we have to think because, so this is going to go here. This piece is going to go underneath. I'm just going to kind of set this all up how I think it's going to go like this. <clears throat> Like that, like this. All right, so now we have to decide, this would make a really nice Father's Day card. I'm gonna sit this here to hold it. We have to decide what we want. So we can do, thank you for making a difference in my life. Um, we could put that on like a little thing down here. We could do, I'll always look up to you. That probably would fit, let's see. That should fit nicely right here. I'm just kind of trying to decide the layout and what we're going to put on the other one. So we could do this. And then we could have this piece up here be... Should we do a circle or a square? Does anybody have a preference? And then what I'll do is I'm going to do just like the boat. The boat. Kind of there. And then on the inside, we could add the little oars and decorate it a little bit. Or we could add, even add, like, on the inside, we could do a little panel with that. I didn't use this one. If you see, I made this the other day. So that was really pretty fun. But we could do something like that. Any suggestions? You color, you hated forest green. Gosh, that was my favorite color when I was in high school. Not trying to make you feel bad, Karen, but that was like the go-to color in the 90s. Maybe that's why you didn't like it. It was just too much. All right, circle. I see circle. Circle, circle. So let me get out my circles. And I still think I'm going to go with the stitch circle for this. So we'll go with the second largest stitch circle. And then I'm not going to do a scallop circle. I'm just going to do a regular circle for the second layer. And let's see which one's one bigger. Nope, same size. I think it's probably going to be, yeah. So this is the second largest layering circle. So we'll kind of make this as manly, doodly as we can. I feel like if we still had that galvanized paper, so if you still have that, that would make an excellent second circle for this. But I don't know if we carry that anymore. I still have some, but I don't know where it is right at this moment. So let's see, what did I do with that other big white piece that I had here? Here it is. So I'm going to stamp the boat. Kind of same thing again. I'm just going to take this. I'm going to go on the outside. That way I can, I'll, you know, depending on where you cut it, you may or may not see it. But I'm going to hopefully line this up correctly this time. So I'm going to stamp the boat. And... Let's do the boat while we're at it. We'll do the boat in, I'll do it like I did the other day. So I'll show you how I did this boat here. So what I did was I did it in stays on. Sorry if that's shaking the camera. So we'll do the boat in stays on. Woo! Flipped off just in the right way. And I don't know if this is corny or not, but let's add this little fish here. I couldn't get my small block. So I have a little, this has a little tiny fish in it. I'll just do that. I don't know. If you don't like that, you can leave it off. But this does need to dry for a minute. But what I have, and where in the world did I put them? Because that is important. Oops. Here they are. I have these aqua painters filled with alcohol. So we will color this in with that. I did end up using... Crumb cake, which my crumb cake has somehow had a, uh, an affair with Wink of Stella and soft suede. And then we'll do some seaside spray and some pretty peacock for the water. And for the fish, I'm going to add in a little bit of uh, granny apple green just to kind of do like a blue and a green-ish fish. And then we're going to do the sentiment. This is the only other thing we need to do. And we'll cut this out with something else. So let's stamp the sentiment in. I'm going to do the same thing, I think. I'm just going to do stays on since I have it here. And see if we can trim this out nicely. Oh, why is it not inking? wonder why, Rach. Okay. I 
I really, I think the best part about this particular stamp set is it's really with the wording in it you could use it for absolutely anything which I think is so so good because it doesn't really necessarily have to be for like your dad or you know your brother or your uncle I think the way they worded it it could even be for a female so I really I really like that you know so like my niece could give me this card if she wanted to so I'm just going to take my aqua painter this does have alcohol in it and I'm just kind of putting a little bit of it in here to dilute it and I'm going to go with kind of the light portions first what I think is light and kind of just I'm kind of just generally filling the whole boat in and then I'm going to go back and add a little again a little bit of alcohol into this because this uh, soft suede definitely gets very dark very fast and just add in a little bit of shading to the boat kind of going around those harder lines and then just kind of drawing it out so start kind of on one side and then bring your shading out same thing. I'm going to just make this just a little bit darker here on the bow. There you go. So that's pretty good. So that was fairly simple. I did much better than I did on my first one because when I do my sample, sometimes I kind of just like slap it together and then everybody's like, well, how did you get that? I'm like, well, you probably don't want yours to look like mine because mine, I don't really think I did such a good job on it, but so same thing again, seaside spray now. I did clean off my pen, so I'm kind of just giving this like a general wash to the water. I want it to be very light, and then we can always add in more. And I'm kind of trying to do the same thing around the side. That way there's not really anything that's necessarily a skyline. And this is where my my coloring isn't as wonderful as I would like it to be okay so then I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of the pretty peacock give that a squeeze How come my alcohol is not coming out Oh, that was a little bit more than I wanted, but it's alcohol. It'll dry up. So I just want to get this a little bit lighter because this color can be very potent if you don't dilute it correctly. I'm going to add a little bit here to the fish. All right, and then I wanna add just a little bit of green just to make our fish interesting. I don't know, I guess he's like a, I'm not a really a fish person. To, to say I know what they look like. I do like fish, especially to eat them. <laughs> but I don't know one fish from the other. So that's all we're going to do for that. If you wanted to, you could also, just so you have like that shimmer effect to the water, you could take your wink of Stella pen. Make sure this is not going to make a humongous mess. This one might be empty. That could be why. Just go over it just a little bit. Just to kind of give that like shimmer to the water. All right. So there's that. So I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one while I'm at it. Just trim this part off. I'm going to trim this a little bit closer. 
So that's a pretty, pretty tight trim considering. I'm going to get just a little bit more here at the end. So that'll go down at the bottom. Now we just have to cut this out. And what did we decide? So I have this and this, and then I need to have, I'm actually going to go down just a little bit, something else to layer. How about if we just do a gray? Let's see. Let's do a kind of a basic gray circle. That should fit. So gal the galvanized paper, if you have that, I think that would look really, really cool. You could also do um, silver. You could do something. I really think that galvanized paper would look neat, though, if you have that. Black foil, that would look nice as well. Here's my other pad. Okay, so here's our two layers. Oh, I must have had something pink on there. <laughs> Whatever that was. All right, so I'm actually going to pop this one up this time. And you know what the funniest thing is, guys? Sometimes I will sit and try to think of, like, different things to show you, like, something different. But sometimes all you have to do is just go through your cards, mail some of them out, and you'll come up with ideas that you forgot to use, that you forgot you had, or that you forgot you made. So there's that. This one we're just going to um, put onto the end. If you wanted to, you certainly could have flagged a piece or something like that, but I'm going to leave it like that. I am going to just to, what do we say this was, garden green, just to kind of bring it in. I'm just going to trace the outline with my marker with garden green. It's not really very much color, but it kind of will hopefully separate the layers, but also not make it too overdone looking, I guess is what I'm trying to go for. And I'm going to put this one up as well. One more. I probably should have spaced that out better, but... Okay. So, here we go again. We still haven't put this down specifically yet, but... So, if we're going to put this here, that's kind of eyeball where we think we want it. So, we would have this panel here. See if we can do this panel here. So let me glue this down. Again, I do like using this liquid glue. And if you haven't already, if you haven't ordered them or heard of them, because I know every time I do a video, somebody said, where did you get that cool glue holder from? So if you go on Facebook to Crafter Solutions, uh, our friend, Lisa and her husband John make these and I'm going to kind of set that just there. I just want to be able to put this on. I think I'm going to move it up just a little bit. You can order them um, on Etsy. So there I'm going to put that here. You can order them on Etsy. I'm going to do the same thing on this. I'm going to put some glue on the back. You will not believe how much more glue you get out of this bottle it's crazy absolutely crazy so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of stick this where I think I want it so it's in the center but I had it up a little bit I'm layering these two pieces down gently in case I have to move them this one needs to go to the edge you'll notice that when you hook this up you're gonna have to slide it out a little bit and I'm just seeing before I press so that looks pretty good. So let me just go back in here a little bit. I have a little glue and I'm going to just push this down with my bone folder. So it kind of smushes all that glue, smush that end piece. Very nice. And this I'm going to just put on here with some glue. I'm just going to go to the end like that. So I can decide exactly where I want it. Like that. And I do like to open it just to make sure I didn't get any glue on here and then it's sealed shut permanently. So there's that piece. Now all I have to do is cut out. I still have a little piece of white. Maybe I used it. Let me grab another piece. 
just have to make one for the inside. So again, it was three and a half square. And we'll add a little something to the inside. All right, so this panel is going to just go right over top of this. Again, if you want to, you could absolutely cut out with this. Um, use a square, use a punch, and punch where you think it's going to be. You're just going to have to be a little bit creative with your um, punching and whatnot before you tape this down. So if you don't want this layer, because I know, believe me, I feel the same way you do. Sometimes I look and I'm like, now why did that person just waste that entire piece of DSP? Because I said that so many times, you all have no idea. And and I'm going to put a sentiment, and then I'm just going to put like an or down here at the bottom. That way you still have a, pl a place to uh, write. So I think I'm going to do one, one or this way, and then a darker one that way. So I'm going to do that. But I've thought that myself, like, why did they just waste that entire piece of DSP? And look, here I am doing the exact same thing. So I'm going to do this in the lighter one first. So this is crumb cake. And I'm going to stamp it off just because I want it to be really light. And then the other one I'm going to do in soft suede. I don't know why I felt like they needed to be that different. I guess they probably didn't, but oh well. And then I'm going to do this same thing. I'll just stick with the stays on since this is layered onto um, the black. Argyle is kind of black. You could probably use dark gray. So, and I did not adhere this down yet. So, I didn't adhere it down too. That way, in case I goofed it, I could always flip it over. So that was intentional. Whoopsies. And then, like I said, you could certainly add, there's a lot of other stuff that comes in the suite. I was going to get it, but I have not gotten the full suite as of yet. So since this is going to go in the center here, and I know it's going to cover it up in case any of that's just a little bit wet. I'm just flipping it right on itself. You could certainly be smarter than me and use a little scrap of paper to put it on in case anything was damp. So, adorable. There you go. You get this now and you'll be set for Father's Day. Or your brother's birthday. Or your nephew. Now granted, you could certainly change up the sentiments. But I think they're, this is a really, really nice card set. And I, I really like the fact of this by the dock. Could go really well with the golf paper. Without having to have, you know, be golfy because it's plaid. This also would be a great paper if you ended up getting a lot of it, you really liked it. You could hang on to for next year for Christmas because it does have some great colors in it for Christmas as well. Or if you happen to be a demonstrator and you already ordered it and you for some reason didn't make your Christmas cards yet. And guess what? There is no shame in that whatsoever because, you know, lots of us are doing lots of different things. And I made out, mailed out all my other Christmas cards because we do send photo cards of the rainbow stamper. As a matter of fact, hold on, I'll show it to you real quick. So we do photo cards of the rainbow stamper. Isn't he adorable? So we do those and then I'll mail out cards to my team and to my um, customers and everything. But we have, I think we send out like a hundred and some cards. So I certainly, I know there are people that make cards and you know what, more power to you. I am very impressed. I do not, I wouldn't have the patience to make a hundred of the same card or similar card for Christmas. It's just, and then I'd probably be frustrated because they all either didn't coordinate as much as I wanted them to or whatever the case may be. So I hope you guys like this card. I thought it was really fun. Great to be able to incorporate, um, a Christmas, a last minute Christmas if you need it, or just a guy card. Maybe you have somebody whose birthday is coming up and they really don't want a Christmas birthday card, so you could give them this. I do have a friend whose birthday, actually, her birthday is New Year's Eve, so that's always exciting for her because she always goes out and has a good time. So that's a probably a great birthday to have, except for if you were the person who was having the baby on New Year's Eve. I'm sure that probably wasn't very exciting for her mom. <laughs> But anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week getting ready for Christmas. We do have a Christmas, Christian's Christmas party is coming up this Friday, so that'll be fun for him. So I probably won't be on tomorrow or Friday because I am in charge of doing the craft for class. And I'm trying to do this um, handprint that I saw that looks like a manger. And then they're going to use their thumb 
to be the baby Jesus. So I have to get all of that ready. And I kind of just finalized what I wanted to do with it. But I think it's going to be really, really cute. But some of the kids, it was funny when we did them for Halloween. Some of them did not like to get their hands dirty with paint. And I said, it'll come off. And I'm thinking, this, you know, kids are so funny, as dirty as they like to be. But when you get paint on their hand, they're like, oh, I don't want that. <laughs> so I hope you guys have a great week. I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas. Like I said, if I can pop on sometime next Monday or Tuesday, I will. I just won't be able to schedule it at this point. I definitely won't be live next Wednesday. But I will try to come back sometime before New Year's and if I can swing in a New Year's card. If I can't do a live one, I will post one on my YouTube page. So if you aren't following me on my YouTube page, head over there. You can find me at Rach the Samper. All you have to do is click the subscribe button, which it's a red button. And then if you click the bell, it will actually turn on a notification. And when I make a video or if I go live, it'll send you an alert so you know that there's something new for you to watch. So I want to thank you. I know we're coming to the end of the year and People are probably like, okay, wrap it up. But thank you all so much for all of your support so far this year. I truly, truly appreciate it. I really love crafting with you all because it makes me feel like I am crafting with my friends. And a lot of my friends don't like to craft. So you all are better because you're friends who actually enjoy it. Thank you for coming back and putting up with some of the cards that, oh, were so embarrassing. Like that horrible, oh, I'm still looking at these cards that we made with that night before Christmas thing. I just won't put them in the recycle bin. As a matter of fact, I just might... But thanks for sticking with me through the great cards and the not so great cards. I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday with your family and friends. And I look forward to talking to you all again really, really soon. Take care, guys.